I think Jalen has the makings of being a really good quarterback. Now, is he going to be a quarterback that can get you to the promised land? I think that remains to be seen. I think that remains to be seen because, you know, for whatever reason, especially at that position, there's a lot of things that people feel are intangibles that make you an elite or a, a Super Bowl winning quarterback. Hell, Brad Johnson went to the Super Bowl. Our man, there he is. Hey, what's up, baby? What's Hong going Kong on, Fu fellas? Hong Kong Fui, number one super guy, man. <laughs> you know, everybody shirt? doesn't everybody doesn't know who this is, man. No that question. That's old school for real. <laughs> that's a badass shirt right there. Yeah, this, that, this is old school for real, man. That's, that's yeah. old school. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he, yeah. He, he was in that file cabinet. He'd pop out. He was ready to go. Oh, yeah. Fooey. Number one super guy. <laughs> I, <Yeah>. Yes. <laughs> Love it, man. So, Hugh, good to see you, first of all, man. I, and I know, are you, I don't know if you're still in town, but you were in town the last couple of days. You were at B-Dog's yeah. thing. Yeah, I'm yesterday. still here. I'm still okay. here, man, working out of the, uh, the Tasty Cake Studios. Yep. I'm still in Tasty Cakes every day. Bro, Loaded that's how I've been here. Yeah. I got to do it, bro. Every time I come, I let them know. I say, hey, hey. Rod, I, I'm just letting you know. I mean, make sure that it's stacked up. Because when I leave here, I'm bringing half of it with me, bro. Hey, hey man, listen. <laughs> and, and, and you know you know what's funny? They've been real great about it, man. Because I haven't been here in so long. But, and, and when you come to Philadelphia, see, there you, you're you used to having tasty cakes every day. Exactly. You exactly. get fresh cakes every day. I'm coming from Georgia, man. And we have, like, a, a, a place where they have tasty cakes, but they're not fresh. They're not coming from the company <laughs> like 15 minutes down the street every they're day. Not so. They're not tasty anymore. No, man, point. listen. No. So I got to hit them up. I got, I, I've got. been hitting them up every day I've been here. <laughs> every right. day. You, you'll, and Barry, you'll appreciate this. And uh, the, the host's name will go unsaid, but there, you, I swear to you, there used to be a host who would wear a, like a trench coat, Okay. He would open the, that this bad boy up and had all these inside pockets, and he would just go like this and just pour the tasty cakes into the trench coat and then roll at the end of his shift. I'm just saying. I'm just saying that, that used like to happen. Somebody I know. I know it does. I know it does. And we will. We'll just be in the sake of not naming names because I heard you talking about some of the some of the past uh, hosts yeah. that you've had that didn't take this job seriously. Yeah. I'll just leave it alone. <laughs> yes. No, I'll Hugh, leave it alone. I, I say this in all, I'm not just, I wouldn't say anything. So I'm not just blowing smoke. Hugh was a fun dude to do a show with because you always left. I right, always, right. I always came away having fun with you. It's Barrett's, the, you guys are very similar in that sense. So you guys are fun to work Bro, with. You can't you. be too serious, man. Plus, you know, people on the stream, they want to see, they don't want to see you being so serious that they can't relate to, they can't talk to you. know, they know they can relate and talk to you. You know, you have a better shot. You have a better opportunity, man. That way, you ain't got to worry about, you know what I'm saying, people disrespect you because they know it's all on the real. It's all on the up and up, you know what I'm saying? I get people yeah. on. They they drive me all the time, man, all the time, man. But I appreciate them, man, because at least they're saying something to me. Well, I'll you call them as long as you call them. You, you, you know this. There's times to get after. Like, the Eagles get killed, and you're coming on after. Of course, you're, you're going to be in blast-off mode, right? Mm -hmm. But there's other times where – it doesn't need to be blood, guts, life, and death, man. Let, let's let's have a little fun. I mean, you know, I look at it like this, man. And 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 I, and I say this because we, you know, I've been doing radio for a while now. I have never once had anybody come up to me and quote a stat that I gave on the air. Right. It's, it's, it's about nobody, nobody's ever said, Hey man, you broke down that that stat on four for one. Like it was like that's not what we do, man. We 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 do local radio because we connect with the people that we talk to and we feel the yep. same way that, that they do. Amen. And that's why they listen to you on the air. That's why they watch your show, Barrett, because mm -hmm. they can relate to you because they know that you know what you understand, what they're going through. Right. And, right, and, right. and you keep it, like I like to say, you keep it 100. You mm -hmm. keep it 100, Rob. Yeah. I mean, that's what it's all about, man, because nobody wants to talk to a, a host or, or listen to a show with somebody they cannot relate to and does not understand what they're going through. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. You, you, yeah. can't, you can't be on an ivory tower talking about what we talk about on a daily basis. That's well said, man. And look, the other part is, and I would say this to, to guys, like, you know, younger host or whatever, what's, what's the, you got to entertain, like you got to be able to entertain and engage. Like you got to, you got to have, they got to be having fun with it. They got to be willing to stick around and listen to you a little bit. It can't just be, on third down, on third and four, and this guy – you start bludgeoning people with numbers, man. They're, they're yeah, I've I, I, I never been that type of guy, man. I, I I work with people. When they start talking numbers, I'll say, uh-huh. 
Right. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. And you're like, you're like looking around. Yeah, because yeah, you know, yeah. you know, yeah, right hey, on. listen, that yeah. ADD kick in and, and I'm I'm somewhere else. I I'm the same way, out. bro. I'm, I'm yeah. doing something else. Yeah, right, you're, right. There, you're there in body, but you're not there. Yeah, that, yeah I'm somewhere else, man. I ain't, I ain't paying attention to what you're talking about. Hey, hey bro, at the end of the day, if I'm not talking about White Castles or something like that, man, I'm just not into it, bro. You know, yeah, but you I gotta know be into it every time, man, bro. Listen, <laughs> nobody wants to hear about that, man. Listen, we all watch the game a certain way. I know, Baird, you probably watch it from the offensive line perspective. I right. look at the defensive line. Right. Yeah. Rob, you, you're probably looking at it from all angles. Yeah. You know, you're probably, you know, I, I'm not trying to pitch on you, but you might look at the, why did Big Red, just using him as an example, why did he call a timeout yeah. in this certain situation? 100%. That's exactly him right there. He's right trying to play yeah. his yeah, 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 you know, <laughs> and, and it's our job to try to get, because we're closer to Big Red and try to make, try to understand, okay, what was he thinking in this situation? Because that's what people want to know. Right. You know what I mean? That, that's what people want to know. They want to know, okay, well, why didn't, why didn't he do this in this situation? You say, well, because of, you know, whatever, the circumstances, whatever. That's what, that's what you do. You try to bring people behind the curtain. Yeah. Well, look, the, the beauty of our show is, you. yes, we're we're local here in Philadelphia, but we're also, you know, all national and global in a lot of ways. We get people from Switzerland, et cetera. But for, for our Philadelphia folks, we, we know, and we got a chance to hear you this week. It was great to hear you back on the airwaves. How are things in Atlanta, man? I know you're doing a uh, morning talk down there, but how, how was, uh, how's been the transition to go back down to the, uh, to the ATL? Oh man, it's been great, man. You know, talk a lot of college football, been talking a lot of NIL deals this week, Ooh, you know, Saban, hey, baby. And, and I know <laughs> you guys probably don't know this, but Nick Saban kind of dropped the bomb oh. this week when he was talking about those, those NILs and calling coaches out and everything like that, man. Yeah. It's been, it's been hot. You know, it, it, you know, kids are getting money now. They're getting paid. Uh -huh. and, well, they've always been getting paid. They're mm -hmm. getting paid above the table now, not yep. not underneath the table. So, yeah, that, that's been the hottest talk. I, I don't know if you saw it, man. Jimbo Fisher went all scorched. Yes. He, he went scorched earth, man. Man, listen. Because, listen, Coach Saban, like Coach Saban threw Jimbo under the bus and he threw Deion under the bus. Right. And and, and my thing is this. Think about, think of, man, you went to a big school. I don't know if you were taking that big that big school money that they was giving away. Bro, I was but, at Kansas State, man. There was no big money there. Hey, you man. know they got you know they was paying you under the table to go to Kansas State, man. Bro, they <laughs> gave me a water bed and a Honda Elite scooter. That's hey. it. And it was and it was a and it was a and it was a, and it was a um it was a you know, have you ever seen a twin size water? I had a twin size water, not a I, I, no, dog. I, I ain't never seen no twin size water bed. <laughs> Boy, I know the struggle was real. I know the struggle had to be real. <laughs> oh hey, good, yeah. but but Pete got but Pete, just think about it like this, man. Think if we were in we were playing nowadays. You got kids making eight hundred thousand dollars in driving Lamborghinis. Mm -hmm. right. You got kids that, that you talk about Arch Manning right now, who is potentially looking at making three million dollars mm -hmm. in strictly NIL deals. And you talking about Bronny James, they're talking about he might make six million. Jesus. Bro, look it up. Look at Oklahoma. Oklahoma said that each one of their athletes will get 50, 50, 50 G's. 50 G come on, man. I, I just I was I was dead broke in college and I was a total screw up knucklehead. If I was given that kind of money, I would fail <laughs> out in two seconds. We were, we were all dead broke in college. And just think about this. Think about it like this, fellas. Off of if we had got five hundred dollars. We'd have been okay because look, we'd have, we'd have probably bought some Raymond noodles, yep, a, a, a bag of chips, uh -huh. and if you drink beer, bought you a case of beer, uh -huh. and you were straight for the yep. whole month and, yep. and be able to wash your clothes. Right, yeah. you who Hugh Rob, listen to this, bro. And I did this for four years straight. Yeah. At the time, the uh, all the places you can give blood weren't tied together because we're talking about this pre. -internet no, you and didn't. All that stuff. No, you didn't, bro. No, every didn't. Friday, I would give blood. <laughs> Get twenty dollars, man. Friday before a game, I'm thinking to myself. Friday before a game, you were doing this. I did this for four years straight, oh dog. My God, hey. man. And 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 still was drafting the second round. I can't believe it, man. I cannot believe hey, I hey, made it hey, to the man, NFL, bro. Thing, like, listen to survive. I remember. <laughs> remember how you had the coin machines, right? And you would put like you would put the coins in the machine. Yeah. We would take a piece of tile and a quarter and cut out slugs. And put them in the coin machine. That's how we used to wash our clothes. Damn. So you, you know, I know the struggle. I hey, hear hey. We used to break into the cafeteria at my school and steal. <laughs> you know, we used to steal the ham. We used to steal the big old ham. 
<laughs> we used to do all, man, listen, we was straight, at Central State, we was straight renegades, man. <laughs> it was bad. It was bad at my school. <laughs> Can you imagine the, the, the poor guy opening up the next day? Like, where are the hamps? Did that put them right here? Oh, they go. Hey, and, and this is the bad part, Rob. We didn't have, like, actual knives or anything. We tried to cut a big ass ham with a with a plastic knife. <laughs> Have you ever did that before? <laughs> it's, it's, the luck. struggle was real. Yeah, yes. yeah. Good luck. Good luck. Or you yeah. just ripping it apart with bro, your bare hands. Bro. Yeah, yeah. But these surviving. kids nowadays, man, you talk about making. You got some kids before they 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 hit the campus a oh. million dollars. Yeah, uh, five hundred thousand dollars to have shoe deals, have car deals. That you is know, crazy, all kinds man. of crazy stuff now. It is. We it were is. born way, way too soon. Too way man. too soon, man. Too early, right, man. Yo, well, me, yeah. me and he were in the um, East West Shrine game together. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he was tearing my ass up, too. <laughs> <laughs> he was nasty. Don't, don't don't get it twisted here. He was a nasty player, man. That's that was a long weird. time ago, man. Hey, now, <laughs> hey, hey. hey, now I just try not to stand up too long, man. I just want to make sure <laughs> I got me a comfortable place to sit. I got you. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and, 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 and make sure the AC working. That's about it. That's bro, it, bro. Well. But then look, look. Then he then he they made the trade and he came to Philly. And I mean, one on ones, he's flying around. Uh, we go to team pay, he's flying around. We get the nine on seven. Boy, oh, I come off the ball band. Oh, oh, you got you, you got me this time. You got you got hey, man, me. Ain't nobody, <laughs> hey, with no money in playing the run. What you talking about? <laughs> oh, you you got me, you got me, you got me, you got me. <laughs> hey, still ain't no money in playing the run. Still ain't no money. We gotta conserve that energy, man. You know yeah, because I mean? nobody play. Listen, even like think about the NFL today. Like when you watch football now, most the, the you remember how you used to have a base defense? Yeah, everybody's running nickel now every down because everybody's throwing the ball. No, that's you, what I said. Like, think about it. I just said it. Everybody's two platooning now. Everybody. Yep, yep. Yeah. How about that? Four times double digit sacks for Hugh Douglas. Fifteen, in fact, in the in the wow. year two thousand. Man, he could get after that quarterback. That's for sure. Hugh, I got to ask you. Um, you down there in Georgia? You're seeing Jordan Davis and the Kobe Dean a lot. Yeah. You know, during your time down there, what are we getting here in Philly with these two guys, man? Hey, listen, man. I, I think the Kobe Dean is 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 a, is a true leader. I think that, you know, when you, you talk about it, it's funny that you mentioned it because a lot of people in Georgia were upset that they the Falcons didn't draft me. Mm. But I kept telling them, I said, listen, like we run a different defense in Atlanta as opposed to the defense that they're going to run in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. You look at, the, you look at uh, the, the guys that they have in front of you, Javon Hargraves, Fletcher Cox, Jordan Davis. Those are some big dudes up front. You got Brandon Graham coming back. You know what I'm saying? You got across the front of that defensive line, you got some big dudes. Nicobe Dean is going to be allowed to just run, scrape, and make plays. That's what he's at his best. I know a lot of people are talking about he's a smaller guy. You know, mm -hmm. honestly, I met him the other day. Me and him look like we're about the same height. He, he's a lot lighter than me, mm -hmm. but you got to expect like a year in, he'll probably put on a little bit more weight. He'll sure. probably go about 235, 240. Mm -hmm. But, dude, as long as you have those big guys in front of you, taking up all those double team blocks and everything like that and just let him run. I think he's going to be a force in that defense. I really do. Mm. How, yeah. about, how about Davis? There's some people that are concerned that he played 38% of the time. And I look at that partly, Hugh, that they were loaded and they were, you know, rolling a well, lot of guys. Not only in. that, you yeah. had, you had two different lines. Like he was mostly a run player. He was primarily on rundown. Mm. Now people want to point to that Alabama game where, you know, he was getting double teamed. And then he was out there on the field. He didn't have that much production. Mm -hmm. I'll say to those people this, because the, the, I was concerned about that too. He had, what, three weeks to get ready for the second showdown against Alabama? Yeah, the national the guy got in. The, he got on the – he lost a little bit of weight. He was working on the treadmill and everything, and he showed up in the last game when it really mattered. Mm -hmm. So he has a tremendous work ethic. There's no question about that. Because that was one of the one things that I was I was concerned about. Because I was like, dude, I was right. watching the game with a, with a friend of mine who's a big Georgia fan, and I was like, dog, he's getting killed on those double teams. And he was like, well, that's not what he does. And I mm -hmm. said, well, listen, if he want to play at the next level, he better get his stuff together. He better get it together. And he did. He took three weeks. He lost a little bit of weight, and he was more of a factor in that game against Alabama the second time than he was that first go round. Well, you think it's as far as defensively, um, with with them going out and getting bigger players. You know, they got Hargraves, they have Fudger Cox, they got you know guy Jordan Davis who who can go in there and stop that. Do you think it more be more aggressive on the outside, especially with the addition of this uh this new corner? I think you can, because you know you know pass rushing, pass rush and covers go hand in hand. 
in my book, it always has. You know, you're talking about I played with guys like Bobby Taylor, uh, Al Harris, and Troy Vincent. Yep. So it goes hand in hand. So now when you have a bigger corner, like the guy you just got from the Giants that Bradbury, everybody's yep. excited about, you got that. You got Brandon Graham coming back. Don't know how much Brandon's going to give you because, let's be honest, coming off an Achilles injury and being a little bit older, that's asking a lot. But you got those, you got those two big spaces in the middle. Hargraves can get after the, he can get after the quarterback. Hmm. And you got a nice rotation going. And then you work the Kobe Dean in there too. Dude, you you have the makings of a pretty good defense in Philadelphia. Yeah, I mean, the only area you, you worry about is safety. And and the one thing I always tell say to people, Hugh, is look, you're not gonna be perfect everywhere, man. And there's still time to, to make a move, but yeah. every team's got these issues where you say, Hey, I don't love this spot, but that, that's almost across the board. Every everybody has deficiencies. You know, and, and you look at one of the deficiencies that the, the Eagles went out and they addressed. They went out and got another receiver, A.J. Brown. Devontae Smith in his second season. He's looking. And you got to think about it like this too, Rob and Barrett. You're supposed to make a huge leap where it's, you're supposed to in your, from your first year to your second year. Mm -hmm. You know, because that's when the game's supposed to slow down for you. You're supposed to go out there and, and, and now everything is just, it, it just comes to you quickly. You know what you're supposed to do. You know how they're trying to play you, and the game slows down. So they, they're dependent on that a lot too, and they're dependent on Jalen Hurts taking that next step at the quarterback spot. Yep, that's that's huge. That's huge. Well, look at the coaching staff. You know, I mean, this is going to be their second year also. So they're you know they, they, the second next year out should go and making a substantial leap from you know being a rookie head coach to now being a second year head coach. Jalen being under the same tutelage for twice in one year instead of yeah. you know different offensive coordinators. You know. What do you see Nick Sariani and his uh, development? You know what? I haven't had a chance to to see him too much in the offseason press conference, but I will say this. It was something that, that Coach Arthur Smith said in Atlanta that really resonated with me, and you never hear a whole lot of coaches talk about. He admitted that he made mistakes in his first season as a quarter, I mean as a head coach. He admitted that. Hmm. And he said, he said to a man, he wished there are some things that he could have did a little differently. I'm pretty sure Coach Sirianni feels the same way. Mm -hmm. And you learn from those mistakes. You know, just as well as I do, Bear, they go back and they watch a lot of film. They they go in and they look at some of the same, they look at the scenarios that they were in and they say, well, hey, I could have probably did this better. But you never hear him say it. Never hear him say it. So right, I'm pretty sure right. Coach Sirianni went back and he did that. And, and that's probably one of the reasons why they were motivated to get some more talent around Jalen. I think Jalen has the makings of being a really good quarterback. Now, is he going to be a quarterback that can get you to the promised land? I think that remains to be seen. I think that remains to be seen because, you know, for whatever reason, especially at that position, there's a lot of things that people feel are intangibles that make you an elite or a, a Super Bowl winning quarterback. Hell, Brad Johnson went to the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, he was. He you was know the what I'm saying? He was yeah. the Brad most Johnson regular the quarterback you can get. Neil, yeah. <laughs> Neil O'Donnell. Neil O'Donnell went to the Super Bowl. Yeah, you know he was worse. And than then that. when you look at it, and listen, and it, this is not me talking bad about anybody, mm -hmm. but when you look at the 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 criteria that people have for quarterbacks now and how what they have to be and, and all this other stuff, Troy Eggman don't fit that criteria. Mm -hmm. But guess what? <laughs> guess what? And, 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 and like I said, I'm not trying to disrespect Troy Eggman, mm -hmm. but Troy Eggman is a, 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 a Hall of Famer. And he's a Super Bowl champion. Go look at his numbers mm -hmm. compared to all the quarterbacks that people say are the elite ones now. And look at Troy's numbers. Ah, da, da. You know ah, what da, I'm da. saying? Yep. So yeah. it's, it's like, you know, people try to make, you know, if, if you want to be an elite quarterback, you got to do this, that, and third. Hey, man, win games. Yeah. Hey, by hook or by crook, win games. Win hey, games. Don't, yeah, don't make killer mistakes, right? Yeah, I mean, that's it. Yeah. No doubt. Well, how big a leap do you think they take this year, Hugh? I mean, we saw last year they, they did make the playoffs, although it was a weak schedule, and it's a very weak schedule again. But they were a nine-win team and, and kind of got in, and then they got beat up by the by the Bucks. How big a leap do you think they take this year? I said 11 games. I, yeah. I think they can win 11 games. And that was just me looking like looking at the schedule, just like, okay, looking at, looking at matchups. Because when I look at a schedule – I look at just the matchups on the surface. How does my defense match up with your offense? Or 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 what is what is what one thing that I can lean on that you don't have that maybe I have? Hmm. The Giants, I said, you know, just off the top of my head, you sweep the Giants. The Giants are in 
back to instead of saying rebuild, the the key the trigger word nowadays is transition. <laughs> They're in transition. I don't know. I don't. I, just, I don't. You know what I mean? Yeah. That word can be used for whatever you want to use it for every now nowadays. So they in transition. <laughs> uh, you're probably gonna split with the Cowboys. Yeah. Either you beat them there, or they beat you here. That that's either or. Mm. I think the same with the Redskins. The Redskins got a pretty good defense, and that defense is gonna keep them in the game. And I think Carson Wentz is probably gonna have one of those games where. He's going to be feeling some kind of way, and he might get you. It's not going to be a blowout. It's mm. not It's not like you're going to get beat. It's going to be one of those squeakers. Mm. So you you got that. And then you look at the division and how they match up. Uh, I think that a lot of those matchups, the Eagles would be favored in. So I gave them 11 wins. I think 11 is fair. I mean, it's two better than last year with a, probably a weaker schedule with much more talent on the roster. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the way I, I – I don't think it's, it's just taking a big leap. Did the Cowboys take a step back, or are they kind of the same team they were last year? I think I think they're yeah, they're a pretty good team. Uh, who what was the receiver that they lost? Because they lost Cooper, uh, Cooper, Amari Cooper, Amari Cooper. They lost Amari Cooper. Dude, listen, let me tell you. I saw that first game of the season against Tampa Bay. Hmm. Boy, Dak looked like he could do no wrong. I was yeah. like, God, I was like, good job, the Cowboys. Like they look like they might have been legit. Which yeah. made me sick to my stomach when I saw. It. <laughs> but you know, you got to give props what props to do. Yeah. Uh, I think that they'll still be there because uh, Michael Parsons, hey, man, that cat can play. Oof. He the real deal. That cat He's definitely play. the real deal. Yeah, he's scary, dude. <laughs> he, he, he can play. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, that those corners are pretty good. They got a pretty good defense. They they get after it pretty good. So I think that they'll be, they'll be a team that, you know, you'll have to be reckoning with. They'll be a force to be reckoning with, no question. Well, Hugh, let me ask you this, man. I mean, in this new modern NFL, man, can the Eagles um, – can the Eagles make it with the running game? You know, running game is, is almost obsolete in the NFL. There's only like two or three teams that do it and do it consistently. Do, do, you mean, you, can you know any team run the ball and make it? You know, it's funny. Look at it like this, Barry. And you watch a lot of football. I know you do. Yeah, all the time. Think, think, look, look at how the beginning of the season is in the NFL. Everybody throwing the ball all around the schoolyard. Yep. Everybody. Yep. When it started to get cold, <laughs> team the ball. You know why? You know why? Because that's the time when cats start to make business decisions. That's what I like to call it. Because you know, you be, being up here in the Northeast, like we were, we were used to the, we were used to playing in the cold. I don't know. So yeah, you play those warm weather teams, and they come in and they trying to be all cute and everything. You put that thigh out on them. You put that day. They don't want that, and you know that, and you <laughs> see that when you had those teams that. That will grind it out. Hey, they can throw the ball. They can still throw the ball at will. Yeah. But when you got those teams that got them big old running backs and them cats be leaning on you, be like, oh, no, I don't know. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. <laughs> that's, that's when you, you start know, hearing still, Hey, this still a running league. Like towards December, January, Yeah. you better be able to run the ball because if you ain't, you ain't going to go far. No they, that's, when you, that's when you start hearing those. Oh God, bro. Hey, hey, when they be wincing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my God, that's awesome. Hugh, it, dude, it's been a blast, man. It's great to catch up with you. We miss you around here, man. And, and we're looking forward to, to having you on again. But thanks, man. Hey, thanks man, just let me know when, man. I mean, yeah. hey, you know, phones work in Atlanta, too. I got, I got internet. <laughs> I got well, Wi-Fi. We'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. Hugh, all the, best. Big dog. all the best, man. Thank you. It was hey, great seeing it. this weekend too, man. Yeah, great, 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 great deal. seeing all the boys. Oh, all yeah, it was, it was, hey, man, we had a ball, man. man. We had yeah. a ball. What, what, what a group that was. Hugh, appreciate it, man. All the not best. Not a problem. Man. Not a problem. Talk Take to you soon. Bro. All right, that's Hugh Douglas. Man, he's fun, man. He's a fun. Oh, dude. no question, man. He keep, he keeps it keeps it one hundred, man, and that's what yeah, you does. want, man. He, uh, I mean, it, it is what it is. You know, you're gonna run the ball in the winter when it's cold, and and that's the worst thing you can do to a defense. If you can run the ball consistently against the defense. That's when they start thinking, oh, man, here we yeah. go. That's the moralizing for them. I so. hear you. I hear you. All right. Well, that was fun, man. That was fun uh, today, you and I hanging out. we got a big store show in, uh, in store for you on Friday as well. So you want to be locked in each and every day, noon to three, right here at Jacob Sports YouTube Network. But for Barrett, hopefully – and by the way, Derek, feel better, man. We will feel see better, you Feel better, bro. Yep. We'll see you tomorrow. Uh, and to Xander, our producer, Xander Krause, great job. To all of you uh, streaming, all of you watching, all of you listening, all of you in our comment section, we always, always appreciate you. Never take it for granted. So thank you. See you tomorrow at 12 Sports Day.